First, a little backstory on how I stumbled across this obscure effect. I was browsing sciencemanners.org, a forum for hobby chemists that I frequent almost every day, when I clicked into a discussion on making potassium bromate. But what caught my attention was not the synthesis itself, but this post claiming that when the salt was crystallized from aqueous solution, quote, small lightning bolts could be seen. This piqued my curiosity. Turns out, the effect is called crystalloluminescence, a phenomenon I had not heard about before. Luckily, further down, the user linked to a German forum that through the help of Google Translate, I was able to vaguely understand. It shows that the effect can be achieved with common sodium chloride mixed with hydrochloric acid. Since I had both the salt and the acid, and it was claimed that the luminescence could also be seen without the addition of the silver and copper salts, I decided to try the experiment. I quickly made up the two solutions and mixed them together in the dark. And... Nothing. I got absolutely nothing. Sure, some of the salt did precipitate, but not a single flash of light. Clearly, this effect was more sensitive to reaction conditions than I originally thought. Looking back at the German website, I spotted a reference called crystalloluminescence and the nature of the critical nucleus. Reading through the article, my jaw dropped. To explain my reaction, we had to go back a few weeks to a class I was taking in college called Microstructural Dynamics. One of the key takeaways from that course is that nucleation was behind most phase transformations, but it is very difficult to observe directly. But here was a relatively straightforward way to view homogeneous nucleation in action. I just had to get this demonstration to work. Therefore, this project became one of the primary pursuits of my winter break, and the remainder of this video will focus on explaining the procedure that ultimately yielded the best results. These are the four chemicals you'll need for this experiment. We have sodium chloride, hydrochloric acid, copper 2 sulfate, and silver nitrate. I will now go over how best to acquire these chemicals. The easiest chemical to acquire is probably sodium chloride, also known as table salt. However, there are a few things to keep in mind. For this experiment to work properly, you want as little contaminants as possible, which I will discuss in more detail later. However, most salt these days contains potassium iodide as a supplement, which you do not want. Additionally, most finely ground salt contains yellow prussiate of soda, or sodium ferrocyanide, as an additive to prevent caking. Therefore, make sure you look for salt that has salt listed as the only ingredient, such as this Kirkland Signature Sea Salt, or this Canning and Pickling Salt. Next up, hydrochloric acid, which may sound hard to get. However, it is widely available under the more common name muriatic acid, used to etch concrete and to lower the pH of swimming pools. The difficulty here is with the concentration. We want 24 weight percent for this experiment. Traditionally, this was not a problem because muriatic acid was almost always supplied as a 20 degree Baume solution, which is an archaic density measurement that corresponds to roughly 31.45%. However, in recent years, manufacturers have started promoting a quote-unquote greener version of their product. In reality, this is just a more dilute 20% solution of hydrochloric acid, which will not work for this experiment. You also cannot concentrate this acid further through distillation because it is also right around the azeotrope, meaning as you boil it, the mole fraction of the components in the liquid will be the same as in the vapor. Therefore, for this experiment, you need to find acid that is of the original concentration. Luckily, as far as I know, Ace Hardware only sells one brand, Transchem, of Myriad Acid, and as you can see from the bottle, it is 31.45%. Recently, I've also noticed that Lowe's has started carrying the original formulation alongside the quote-unquote greener version. Look for the orange label, and also look on the side to check that it is of the right concentration. If all else fails, I'll leave some links in the description below where you can buy commercial reagent grade hydrochloric acid. This has a concentration of 37%, which is the solubility limit of HCl gas in water. Note that you have to pay a lot more because the shipping and handling of a hazardous chemical requires additional fees. The best source of copper 2 sulfate is root toa. I'll put up what the product looks like on the screen now. I've seen it sold at both Lowe's and Home Depot in the plumbing section. However, since you need such a small amount for this experiment, I decided to make it with chemicals I already owned. You cannot dissolve copper in sulfuric acid by itself since it is not oxidizing enough. 
Therefore, you need to mix in a little hydrogen peroxide. I put some bits of scrap copper in a diluted solution of Rudo drain cleaner, which is concentrated sulfuric acid. Then I poured in a little hydrogen peroxide. After waiting a while, the solution turned light blue. I then crashed it out into acetone acetone to precipitate out these nice fine crystals of copper two sulfate. The only chemical that I would suggest buying online if you do not want to go through the hassle of making it yourself is silver nitrate. This is because as far as I know, nitric acid is not present in any consumer products to an appreciable amount. I was able to get around this by mixing concentrated sulfuric acid with potassium nitrate in the form of stump remover. By heating this mixture with some silver beads, I was able to generate nitric acid in situ and after many fractional crystallizations, I was able to produce this amount of silver nitrate. One final note before we move on to preparing the solutions, you must use distilled water for everything in this experiment. I found this out the hard way after about a week of scratching my head wondering why I was not getting any flashes of light. Turns out, tap water contains contaminants which poison the reaction and stop the light from being generated. Therefore, take it from me, make sure you use distilled water. Let's move on to preparing the saturated sodium chloride solution. The solubility limit of salt and water at room temperature is about 36 grams per 100 milliliters. To prepare about 200 milliliters of this solution, weigh out 72 grams of sodium chloride, It's okay if you go a little over, we want it to be saturated. Then pour in 200 milliliters of water. To speed up the solution, you can heat this in the microwave or over a hot plate. To make the 24% hydrochloric acid solution, add 100 grams of the 31.45% muriatic acid to 31.04 grams of water. To make the solution contain the impurity metal ions, add 1.25 grams of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate to 100 milliliters of water and 1.19 grams of silver nitrate to 100 milliliters of water. This creates a 0.07 molar silver ion solution and a 0.05 molar copper 2 plus ion solution. To 100 milliliters of the 24% hydrochloric acid, Add 0.5 milliliters of the copper sulfate solution we prepared earlier. You'll notice that it takes on a yellowish hue. This is due to copper chloride complexes being formed. Set this aside, this will be solution A. Next, to 100 milliliters of the saturated sodium chloride, add 5 milliliters of the silver nitrate solution. You notice initially that there is a white precipitate of silver chloride. However, after stirring, it redissolves after being complexed by the chloride ions. This is solution B. We are now ready to perform the experiment. To perform the experiment, slowly pour an equal volume of solution B into solution A. Do this in a totally dark room and preferably after your eyes have adjusted to the dark for a while. After a few seconds, you should begin seeing small flashes of light randomly distributed throughout the solution. Here for demonstration purposes, I'm doing it in the light. You can start to see sodium chloride crystals start to form and fall to the bottom of the beaker. Here's the part of the video where I must apologize. Although the effect is simply stunning in person and appears relatively bright, I was unable to capture it well on camera. What you see now is the best still photo I could take. The next minute will be a compilation of my attempt at videoing the flashes under varying lighting conditions. It is not great, but hopefully they give you an idea and further incentivizes you to try the experiment yourself.
light show lasts a good 5 to 10 minutes, after which you will see that the beaker is covered with a layer of sodium chloride crystals. Once no more nuclei are being formed, there are no more flashes of light. So where to go from here? A much more recent study published in 2012 had this to say. Estimates of the nucleation rate predict exceedingly high local supersaturations. Such high supersaturations are expected to be achieved where true homogeneous nucleation occurs in solution. The majority of nucleation studies are plagued by heterogeneous nucleation on dust that is exceedingly difficult to remove from solution. The effect of crystalloluminescence has the potential to act as a signal of the critical act of homogeneous nucleation in solution, which experiment and theory still struggle to understand. We hope that our work will stimulate a new generation of experiments in this area. So, clearly this is a phenomenon deserving of further study. Whenever I have some more spare time, I will continue browsing the literature on this unique effect. But due to limitations, now that I am back on campus, I will not be able to conduct any further experiments until I return home. Thanks for watching.